shall or raise his voice in public, he will not crush the weakest reed. Think about people that are really depressed. The weakest reed he will not crush or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious. And in verse 21, you may want to write this down or reference this for later and screenshot it and save it. And his name will be the hope of all the world. His name. Whose name? The name of Jesus will be the hope of all the world. So here's the good news for you guys. You have hope. And your hope has a name. And his name is Jesus. So here's the question. How are you doing? Like, how are you doing really? How many, how many times have you been asked that question today? How, how are you doing? What do you say when someone says, how are you doing? What do you say? Yeah. I'm good. I'm fine. You may or may not be fine. You may or may not be good, right? But what do you say? It doesn't matter if you had the word. It doesn't matter if your dog died. How you doing? I'm, I'm good. You're not good, <laughs> right? But that's what we say. How are you doing really? All right, let's get real practical. And here's where your handout comes in. I want you to write this down. It is okay to not be okay. All right? It is okay to not be okay. And if you're not okay, or if you know someone that's not okay, what I want to do over the next few minutes is just get super practical, and let's talk about some things that, that you can do, or maybe some things that you, you don't want to do, some things to avoid if you or someone you love and care about is feeling this kind of depression. Now, quick side note, and I just want to say this, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a, I'm not a professional counselor, um, I'm not any of those things. What I want to give you is some, what I believe is general, good, sound advice, and we're going to talk more later about professional help if you need it. I'm not professional in that way, but, but I think this is going to be some good, some good stuff. Let's start with what to avoid, all right? So here we go. Things to avoid if you or someone that you care about is feeling depressed. First one is this, and I know I'm speaking to a room full of teenagers, but staying in bed. <laughs> you want to avoid that. Get eight hours of sleep, absolutely, but you can't sleep for 12, 18, 24 hours, okay? Um, at some point, you got to get up and move. Now, I'm not talking about Saturday, Saturday after finals when you guys are just wiped out and it's normal, I'm going to sleep in. That's fine and good. You know what I'm talking about? Like when you're feeling depressed and you just can't get out of bed like I talked about earlier, you want to avoid that. At some point, you got to get up and you got to move. Number two, avoid this. Avoid alcohol and drugs. And here's the reason why. They're a quick fix. They're an escape. They may make you feel good in the moment, but at the end, they won't. And at the end, what people don't tell you is at the end, you're likely to feel more depressed because of the depressants, right? So you want to you avoid that. You want to avoid negative self-talk. Here's what I say all the time, and I believe this is true. Thoughts become things. You may want to write that down beside it. Thoughts become things. If you want to change the way you feel, you have to change the way you think. What does that look like? Well, it may, it may mean that you take a few minutes to write down some positive things to say to yourself, or some positive things about yourself when you're in a good headspace, right? It may mean that you need to to, to commit some, to just three or four or five scriptures to memory that are encouraging to you. Some of my favorites, if God is for us, who can be against us, right? Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Be still and know that I am God. I am with you even to the end of the age. I mean, these are just scriptures that I've just got planted on the, the back hard drive of my brain. I can pull up at any minute. And they're encouraging and they remind me who God is, right? And who I am. A son of God. You're a daughter of God, a son of God. Alright, number four, comparing yourself. You want to avoid this. Comparing yourself to others. You may want to consider, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling depressed, you may want to consider a social media break. And I know that may sound crazy, but seriously, what is for a lot of us with social media, we're comparing our reality to somebody else's highlight reel. That's always depressing, right? <laughs> and so take a break. Take a break from that. It's always what we go to. Take a break from it because you want to, you, you, what you got to realize is nobody wins and you always lose. Nobody wins when you play the comparison game, all right? 
comparison, nobody knows. All right, here's what to do. Next, next list, right? And I'm starting off with a don't, even though it's a do. But number one, don't judge. Don't judge. Don't judge yourself. And don't judge others harshly if they're feeling depressed. If you or someone you love is feeling depressed, hey, you've got to give yourself grace. You've got to give other people grace. The last thing somebody needs, including yourself, when you're feeling depressed is, is somebody judging you. What you need is support, right? What you need is support, somebody to encourage you, right? And you know what encouragement is? You know what support is? It's you taking your power and putting it up under somebody else. Think about what Jesus did his whole ministry. He took his power, the most powerful person in the universe. What did he do over and over again? From washing the disciples' feet to healing the man with a deformed hand to dying on the cross. What did Jesus do over and over again? He put his power up under other people to lift them up. Right? So, don't judge. Use whatever power you have to put under others and lift them up. Number two, stay connected. Stay connected. The tendency is always to withdraw, to get isolated, and to be alone. But that is absolutely the worst thing you can do. Stay connected. Keep in touch with family, with friends, with people you love, with people that you know love you. Stay connected. The next one, number, what is it, number three, be active. Be active. I don't know if you know this. Did you know that 20 minutes of exercise, a 20-minute workout, did you know this? Can release, can release endorphins in your brain. This is God's, God, God built this into your DNA. 20 minutes of good exercise can relief, release endorphins in your brain. They can lift your mood and it can last for as long as 20 hours, for 12 hours. Isn't that crazy? These endorphins, it's, it's insane. This is, this is God's natural mood booster, mood enhancer, mood lifter. Go for a run, go for a walk. Get sweaty for 20 minutes and you'll feel better. It all it works. It works for me. I, I run every, every day. You can ask Will. Uh, it, it just works. Get outside. Do this outside. Get that sun. Vitamin D. You need vitamin D. All these things help. Number four, feel the fear. That's the advice I can give you. Feel the fear and do it anyway. So often what happens when you get depressed is there's something that you need to do or you have to do, but you don't want to do it. So what you do, right? You procrastinate. You kick that can down the road. You put it off. And the farther you kick that can down the road, guess what? The worse you feel. The best thing you can do is just feel the fear and do it anyway. How many of you remember the first time you rode, you rode a roller coaster, right? Remember the first time? It was a terrifying the first time? Yeah. And how did you feel when you got off? Amazing, right? It's like, whoa, most of us, not you. Everybody else felt amazing, right? It's, it's that thing. Feel the fear and then just do it. Just do it anyway, and you're gonna you're gonna feel better. Next one, number five. All right, I'm not gonna be popular here, but I'm gonna say this anyway. Eat good for you food, right? Comfort food rarely makes you comfortable. That's because food is fuel. And I'm talking about when you're feeling depressed. I love ice cream. I'm all in. All right, but you guys know this. Whenever you're feeling down, that's crazy. But the worst thing you can do. Is, is just load up on you know french fries and frosties that's going to make you feel depressed right it, it is you're going to feel good for a minute and then you're going to you're going to have that sugar crash and you're going to feel low eat good for you food right uh number six have a routine have a routine you may not believe this but we're creatures of habit and this is i didn't come up with this but i think it's true you make your habits then your habits make you you are the culmination of the little things that you do every single day. Whatever those things are for you, whether they're good or bad, whether you do them on purpose or not, whatever you do every day, that, that is who you are. That's who you're becoming. That's who you're going to be, right? So have a routine. You need, you need a morning routine, you know? Even if you're going to sleep in, set your alarm. And when you wake up, get up and have a routine, whatever that is for you. It can be really simple. You don't have to make your bed, pull the covers up, you know, read a scripture, uh, you know, take a, you know, take a walk, whatever it is, eat your breakfast, go to school, go to work, whatever it is, have your routine. If it's screen free in the morning, even better. Give yourself 20, 30 minutes before you pick up your phone, right? I know it's a, it's a crazy idea, but just try it out. Same thing at bedtime. Have a bedtime routine. You probably don't think about this, right? But even just a small routine can make a big difference in your night. Before you go to bed, think about this. Read a scripture. Journal for a second. Reflect on your day. Say a short prayer. It doesn't have to be 
super long or super big, but a small routine, write down something you're grateful for. I promise you it'll make a big difference in how you feel. And that's the last one. Practice gratitude. I would, I would challenge you to try this every day for a week. Just write down three things you're grateful for and one thing you're looking forward to. Try to make it different every day. And then that, don't make it hard. Uh, I'm grateful. Uh, I'm grateful for my family today. I'm grateful that uh, my mom got my favorite pop tart or cereal for breakfast. I'm grateful that uh, that uh, I get to see so and so at school today. Right? What am I looking forward to? I'm looking forward to hanging out with friends. I'm looking forward to man on Monday night. I'm looking forward to whatever it is. Right? Every day for a week, try that. Three things you're grateful for. One thing you're looking forward to. And I promise you, I think it's going to work. You're going to feel different. You're going to feel different. All right. Um. How are we on time, Ben? 